Hello guys and welcome to the Beyond Standards channel. My name is Shanks and today we're gonna take a look into the Erobor faction in Age of the Ring 6.0 which is a mod for Battle for Middle Earth 2, The Rise of the Witch King. Before further ado, let's get it started. Alright guys, this is the fortress of the Erobor faction in Age of the Ring. It's a giant stone, obviously built with Dwarven skill. We also have to activate the Reign of Oakenshield. And just take a look into everything possible here. We're gonna start with some mineshafts to increase our command points, but also our resources. Let's take a look into the list of heroes. We have actually a lot of options here. Uh, from the Rogue, I think that's a really wrong pronouncement, but you know what I'm saying. We have also Killy. We have even the Master of League Town. <laughs> we have the brother of Killy, who is Philly. <laughs> nice names, by the way, Balin. We have also Bart the Bowman, we have uh, Lord Steen, Ironfoot, we have Dvalin and we have also the king, the king himself, Thorin Oakenshield. We're gonna start recruiting him first. Um, this is how our mineshafts are looking like. I like the design quite a lot. And also Dwarven uh, builders are looking here different. And now we can also maybe, I mean, we can't make anything else really, so we will have to make some more farms. And if you don't want to make normal mineshafts, you can also make the Grand Forge. It's going to just give us the same amount of resources, but it's going to reduce the cost of upgrades, while this one is going to uh, work like a tunnel and provides leadership to, to Nerby units. Okay, but I want to see how this is looking like. And let's make more of these now. We're going to make another mineshaft here. I mean, the Dwarven Tunnels are you know working pretty much like in Battle for Middle-earth 2 and Rise of the Witch King. You can get inside of them. And you can also uh, purchase the tunnel upgrades, which is gonna allow the Dwarven Mine to damage and stun Nervy units. But reduces the, the production by 50 for 60 seconds. I think we will, we will have to... No, we don't have to. Our hero is already on the field, so we can actually cancel that one. I don't wanna actually get less money. And building those structures is obviously to get more money. This is how Oakenshield is looking like, guys. Look at that. It's looking pretty real realistic to me. Um, look at that. I like the designs quite a lot. And he has also some abilities. I mean, the King of uh, king Under the Mountain is the leadership. Then we have um, a Resentment, which is an active debuff. We have Goblin Cleaver, which we heard also in the movies. Uh, Thorin gains 75% magical damage and 100% increased armor. That's quite a lot, by the way. We have the Driven by Prophecy, heals Nervy allies and fully refreshes their special ability timers. And then the last but not least is Dubekar. It's a spell Thorin and Nervy allies gain resistance to knockback, 75% armor, 20% speed for a short time. Thorin can crush enemies, stacks with leaderships and buffs. It's a spell after all, so it's gonna stack with everything. Beautiful. We have actually quite a lot of money and the good thing here is the uh, heroes in Age of the Ring, they don't cost any command points. So now get them actually one by one. We can make a, like a fellowship of the Dwarven faction, just why not. Build some more farms. In this case, we don't have money though, that's the problem. I like the way that um, every production building is, the, is with the shortcuts R. So it's easier to build and adapt to, you know, pretty much every single faction. Let's build a tunnel here instead, I would say. Um, we need to build here. This is how the building uh, Grand Forge is looking like. So it's pretty dope. I like the design quite a lot. It looks like the Mount's Tomb kind of a little bit, little bit at least. <laughs> Alright. Uh, and also the fact that you can upgrade those mineshafts and make them kind of work like a tower. Uh, you can also upgrade this one, by the way, and if you do that, allows battalions to purchase the Banakiri upgrades, increases a battalion to level 2. Pretty nice as well, but we're gonna take a look into that also later on. Our Thorin is level 2 now. We will have to wait for the second hero to arrive, and there we go, Lord Thane is now on the field, another king of the Dwarven faction. I mean, Lord Thane already exists in Rise of the Witch King, we know that. He's much more like a sportive hero in Rise of the Witch King. We're gonna take a look into his abilities now in Age of the Rang 6.0. He has also leadership, just like his uh, friend, you know, his nephew, I think. We have also, or cousin, we, have, we can also mount and dismount, that's nice. That's something we don't have in, uh, in 
Rise of the Witch King, for example. We have Baruch Kazad, powerful attack that causes meta impact. We have a Reckless Assault, um, which is a spell and active debuff. We have already something similar to that in Rise of the Witch King. And we have also To the King. On food, summons three battalions of spearmen of the Iron Heels. And on bar, he's gonna summon three battalions of goat riders of the Iron Hills. I like the worry, you know, I like the adaptive kind of things in Age of the Ring quite a lot. Now he's looking like in the movie. Look at that. You can zoom in so you can see better. Look at the design, guys. It's beautiful. I like it. Nice. Okay, now we can make another hero. Let's actually get um Dwalin on the field. He's also pretty expensive. He costs 2,500, so I'm expecting him to be really strong. We have the best materials. But we also have to, you know, have to make sure to keep making more mines to increase our command points and resources. Uh, 300, and I mean, I'm cash floating quite a lot. And I'm, you know, as you guys know, I'm an expert of this game, guys. So, <laughs> I mean, I've never played this before, so this is the first time I see that. The first time I played that and the first time I record that. So I'm gonna learn with you guys here. Learning by doing is the best experience or by watching Shanks, as you guys know. Let's get dismounted. Oh, wait a second. There are some calf. We are against Rohan, by the way, guys. This is um, a skirmish match. Not against a real opponent. It's like against a computer. Um, he's hitting like a truck also and leveling up quite fast. Look at that. He's already level 3. I like that a lot. And we're gonna keep expanding, keep making more and more farms all the time. We are right now at 475 command points. And also Dvalin has arrived. Um, you know, look at that. When near Thorin, Dvalin gains extra damage, armor and attack speed. Brother in arms. I like this. The interaction with the, with the other heroes is always nice. I wanna get dismounted. We're also gonna get uh, Bart. The Dragon Slayer on the field. He costs 1,800, by the way, guys. And once we have all the heroes recruited... Uh, wait a second. Uh, okay, we're gonna deal with them first. I mean, we have now three heroes and they are hitting like an absolute truck. Look at that. And the goal here is gonna be to level up those heroes really fast. Because I would love to see their abilities, what they are able to do in later stages of the game. Okay, but uh, enough talk. We also have to expand. We, I actually would like to make a like a like a tower here. The tower is looking pretty dope as well, and it's kind of realis realistic, you know, to the dwarven faction. Because as you guys know, um, you know, dwarves they have the strongest buildings in Middle Earth. They like to build, but they like to even more destroy. So they are really in both terms powerful when it comes to build buildings or destroy buildings. And they are also pretty strong and tanky at the same time. Look at that. Thorin has 3,800 health with level 4. And they are leveling up quite fast because they are just so powerful. Ooh, they are screaming as well, guys. Holy guacamole. And yeah, during all this time, we can actually recruit another hero. And we're gonna go for... We're gonna go, for, you know, from the top to the bottom. Let's get Bart the Bowman on the field. And also check the power points from the spellbook. So we have the Dwarven skill. Repairs the structure. I mean, nothing special about that one. We have the Ravens of Erebor. Um, it's something to like the Goblin Cave Bats, but it's more like a like a leadership in order to make your unit stronger. Other than you know debuff like Cave Bats work in Rise of the Witch King. And also important to mention is the fact that this is a leadership, and leaders leadership as you guys know stacks with buffs and spells. And then we have Horn of Erobor as well, which is a buff. That means those two abilities are able to stack with each other. And that's gonna increase our damage and armor of our Nervi allied units by 50% each. So pretty nice. I like it a lot. Okay, so Bart is gonna join the battlefield, and then we're gonna also get we're gonna also get Balin on the field. Uh, with our heroes are here. So we should be easily able to... Oh, look at the upgrades you are able to purchase here. That's crazy. So you have Mithril-tipped arrows. Upgrade this battle tower with Mithril-tipped arrows. Increase damage done by arrows. Then we have uh, the banner. Allies near to the tower gain resources per kill. Pretty nice as well. 
We have the Iron Heal Spanner. Ally is near the tree gain damage. So it's a, it's a spell. By the way, it always stacks, as we guys know. Then we have the Eret Mithrim. So increases the vision of uh, the tower. Ally is near the tower. Gain 25% range bonus. Pretty nice as well. Kaza Doom Banner. Ally is near the tower. Become immune to fear and terror. So pretty nice as well. Situationally. And then we have Durin's Banner. Um, they will get 15% faster experience. In this case, I want to go with the arrows, but we can also try it. Oh, you can all... Oh, okay, it's not limited to one. So you can actually purchase them all if you guys want. Oh, that's pretty nice. We have now Bart, the bombman on the field. We're going to use the aggressive stance. Black arrow of deal. We can actually try that out immediately. Let's, uh, let's see how it looks like. We can't use because the unit he was targeting is already dead. And also important to mention is the fact that we don't have heal. Yeah, we don't have heal here in the spellbook, so we have to be careful about our heroes. But but, uh, but we can always build like a, like a well, Warven well, so they have some sort of regeneration. But you can see yourself, they don't lose any health. They are quite tanky. And they have already some abilities unlocked now. The Goblin Cleaver is unlocked from Thorin. Uh, Bali, uh, Dane on the other side has the um, abilities unlocked and the Valin has also his Baruch Kazat. so it's like a fear effect on the enemy units okay pretty nice and we are actually cash floating quite a lot let's get more heroes on the field again the good thing here is that the dwarven heroes they don't cost any command points and the towers are hitting like an absolute truck as well. Erebor is shining bright like a diamond for me, guys. And we also have to build a tower here just to have some sort of protection from this pathway. Okay, because we have nothing else but heroes on the field so far. And I think we can also kind of try to win the game with heroes exclusively. And make another video just for the units you are able to recruit. But there are so many heroes you can recruit from this faction that I do believe... If you get them all on the field and if you get some levels on these heroes, you can easily win the game only with heroes. That's gonna be the challenge of this video. Let's make a challenge. Let's try to win with heroes exclusively. Okay. Balin is gonna join the battlefield now. That's how he looks like. So like, like in the movie, guys. Exactly like in the movie. Look at that. I like the designs quite a lot. And Balin has also a one level uh, level one ability, company, uh, company's look, uh, lookout. It's a leadership as well, but it's an active leadership, I think. Yeah, it's an active leadership. It's gonna give us more vision. And the tower is hitting like an absolute truck as well. And what is that? Bart delivers several barrels of fish that heals nervy units. <laughs> nice one. <laughs> there are some you know weird abilities, but I like them because creating. You know, brand new heroes obviously needs more than only skill. You also have to get some sort of imagination how this hero gonna look like. I mean, not look like design-wise, but also look like ability-wise. And I think the Age of the Ring boys, they are doing a great job. So we're gonna get also the Master of Lake Town. A guy I was never a fan of in the movies. And Killy. But I'm actually excited about this one. So it's like a raven. Recruits the Lord of the Ravens. Okay. But we will see how he's looking like. And then we're also going to take a look into the um, into the upgrades on the Fortress. Once we have all the heroes recruited. It looks funny. We have 685 available command points, but we are at zero. Just because the command points, I mean, just because of the heroes. And the fact that they don't use, uh, use any command points. Let's expand also at the top right side a little bit. And now we have also Killy joining the battlefield. And he, there he is. He looks also like in the movies. Has also level 1 ability. Brotherhood gets a 20% increased damage when Killy is nearby. And Killy is just joining the battlefield. He can fight with a sword and bow. Okay. And he has also like his brother does the Brotherhood ability. And lack of battle... Killy permanently gains a boost in a in a vision of ranged attacks. At level 5, Killy gains resistance to knockback. So I think it's really hard to add some abilities like this. And now we have also the Master of Lake Town joining the battlefield. He has quite a lot of abilities, by the way, with level 1. And uh, Master of the Lake is a leadership, gain 55% damage to nervy 
Lake Town units and increases by 5 per rank. That's pretty nice. Actually, at max rank, you can have more than 50. Because you have 5... Okay, actually not. <laughs> you have exactly 50 also with full rank. And that's the Master of the Ravens. You have the Lord of Ravens, which is uh, a leadership in 5% uh, five speed. Allied heroes, when once he's level 3, allied heroes gonna get 10% faster experience, which is nice. And at rank 5, allied units gain 10% movement speed. And then he has also the Vs, I think, uh, becomes invisible while remaining still. And look at the vision control we have. I mean, did they capture this one? Yes, we did. Okay, that's why. Okay, I was wondering for a single second what happened. Okay, now we have all the heroes. By the way, if you press O on your keyboard, you can also select all your possible heroes on the field to control them at the same time. With D, we're gonna switch them all to the aggressive stance. And now we will be taking a look into the upgrades. And just purchase them now one by one. Beautiful. I mean, that's the fellowship of the Era War faction, guys. Look at that. We have so many heroes on the fields, man. That's crazy. I like it. Level 7 already unlocked. That's nice. And that's gonna refresh the allied heroes' uh, abilities, which is also really nice. Oh, wait a second. We will have to build another tower here. These structures are quite tanky. They have 2000 health. I like it. Okay, beautiful. We can also upgrade every single one here. Oh, we don't have money anymore, so we need to be careful. Capture this one, maybe, just to get some more vision. Okay, there are some more units coming. Now we can actually start picking some abilities, just why not. Uh, let's start with the one in the middle. And grants heavy armor to units in radius, that's nice. Uh, let's go with this one. Okay. Beautiful. Alright, so actually we need to deal with the units first. The tower is gonna make it in time. Beautiful. I mean, that's not like a really hard difficulty what I'm playing against. Obviously, I wanna just show you guys what this faction is able to do. If I would play against Brutal, I wouldn't have the time to explain anything. <laughs> it's really hard. Trust me on that one. Alright, the units are dying very fast to the towers with the upgrades though. And they are barely dealing any damage to the structures just because it's very easy to play against them right now. They're also getting more and more power points. Baldin is getting some more levels. Collecting like structure resources. Oh, nice. We can actually use that on this one. That's gonna increase our resource income. That looks nice. Look at the animations, though. Nice. Beautiful. They are also getting some money because the tower is nearby. And remember the upgrade on the fortress? On, on the tower, I mean, sorry. Uh, which is able to give us money. Oh, look at that. Raven is flying around. Can you attack with them? No, you can't even attack with him. It's not possible. So I'm actually wondering how are you able to get any experience? Oh. Okay. Should be able to defend this, no big deal. And also the tower here should be doing, you know, doing just fine. Um, Arkinstone. So, requires some uh, fortifications upgrade, decreases recruitment time of all the Warven units by 20%, increases movement for all the Warven units by 10, decreases cost of units upgrades by 10, stacks with steel bonus discount. So, it's more like a, like a, hmm. I think it's more like a sportive thing. Remember in Rise of the Witch King, all the abilities are kind of pogging, you know what I'm saying? Like, they are really, really strong. Like, with one faction, you are able to summon Thunderbolts. With the Isengard faction, I mean, then with the other one, you can actually go for a mount, you know, launch a mighty catapult shot. With the Dwarven faction, the Gorgoroth Spire Fireball. With the Mordor faction, and here, it's much more economical, I think. Kinda. But yeah. Uh, in terms of buildings, I think we have now enough money. We are able to build a uh, Hall of Warriors, similar to in like in Rise of the Witch King. We have the assembly. I think here we are able to recruit allies from the world of men, blue mountains, and the iron hills. Here we are able to uh, special units. Okay, here we are able to make battle wagons. I guess. Tower, well, Stitchway, and that's it. That's it. 
Now the challenge has to kick in and we have to finish the game with, you know, with our heroes exclusively. I think that should be just fine. Uh, targeted enemy units, our hero is crippled and loses 25% armor. So it's like a debuff hero. Place a Master Spy on the map. The Master Spy is stealthed and cannot move and reveals a large amount of shroud. Can I choose? Yes, I can choose. Look at that. Look at the picture, guys. It's nice. Look at this. <laughs> and, oh, you have to... There we go. Oh, okay. I mean, he's gonna, you know, of course, near to the fortress, he's gonna automatically get uh, revealed. But, you know, he's quite tanky still. We were able to see quite a lot. Okay, you know what time it is? It's time not only to build structures, now it's time to destroy the enemy structures, boys. Let's go. Let's go. The Dwarven Fellowship of the Ring. We have Thorin Oakenshield. We have Lord Thane the Second Iron Foot. We have Dvalin. We have Bart the Bowman. Bart the Bowman. We have Balin. We have Philly. We have Rogue. We have Killy. And we have, last but not least, also the Master of Lake Town. Let's go, boys. Beautiful. Now I, I want to see some abilities here. Oh, look at the look at the damage they are dealing to the structures, guys. They are. I want to see the damage on the fortress. But one second, one second. Um, let's use this one, and let's use this one. I want to use this one against the building just to see. That's the Baru Kazat. Oof, 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 this guy is hitting like an absolute drag. Look at the damage, ladies and gentlemen. Not gonna lie, I give the enemy some handicap, but I might regret that one. Because the game is feels a little bit too easy to me right now. <laughs> Just wanted to make sure that he's not gonna attack me from the beginning, but the handicap is actually making the enemy buildings and units so much weaker. That this is impacting the game quite a lot. But I think it's a perfect thing to show you guys what the, what the abilities are from the heroes. Let's see what we can pick here. During stay is gonna is gonna cancel like any other battle changing ability. But on top of that, it's gonna stun the enemy units and slowly heals allied units across the map. Or we have the choice to go for the you know Moria reclaimed uh, summons a Dvoro Delve pillar. Surrounded by three battalions of... Oh, that's nice. I want to see that one, actually. Let's go. How oh, it's looking like. There we go. Now we have some units around. They're going to also deal quite a lot of damage. Nice. Beautiful. I mean, the archers are still dealing like zero damage to the buildings, which makes sense. But that should be a really short video. I was not expecting to win that fast, but that's a proof, guys. I'm just a great player in this mod. And for that reason, you have to like and subscribe to this channel. We are also about to host a Christmas tournament for Battle for Middle Earth 2 The Rise of the Witch King. Every single game will be streamed on our live stream. Twitch TV slash Beyond Standards is the link for that. Feel free to follow me there and I would love to see you guys in the next live stream as well. Thank you guys so much for watching. Let me know in the comment section below what do you think about the Erobor faction in Age of the Ring. And if you have any troubles downloading and installing Age of the Ring, all you have to do is join our Discord community. The link for that is going to be also in the video description down below. And we would be happy to help you guys out. See you next time. Until then, take care of yourselves. And as always, stay beyond standards. Peace, boys.